Hey, it's AP, and today I'm making a board game table. Check it out. My lifelong friend, Tony Cox, is a hardcore tabletop gamer. And he recently finished the renovations of his man cave, and he came to me to help complete his little slice of heaven. Yes, he asked me to build him a board game table. Now, what is a board game table, you ask? Well, apparently it's a table that's sunk in so you can put your board games on it, and then you can even put a tabletop on top of it to hide those board games, so then you can like eat on it or or build a project or, or something. And then you remove the tops again, and there's your board game. It's a really cool concept if you're a gamer. I'm not really into the board games just yet, although my pal is trying really hard to get me into them. And who knows, maybe after this project, I will be as dedicated as he is. Probably not in the board game arena. <laughs> The inspiration for this project came from the mini smithy who took a dining room table and converted it into a board game table. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Ours is a little bit different only because it's made 100% from scratch and that's gonna present its own types of challenges. So let's head over to my desk and sketch out what this is actually going to look like. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some one by three, one by three, as the foundation. On top of that, we'll marry some one by six, one by six, and then this will be half inch ply. And then on top, we'll make a lip with a chamfered one by three. And then here is where we're gonna put a piece of one inch by one eighth inch uh, steel, and that's going to allow the magnets to attach here. So we're gonna create some accessories, not in this episode, but in a future episode. And then a two by six will go here. To give it a nice end, we'll put a lip here, maybe like a one by one, and then the top will be three quarter inch plywood. Uh, and that's just so it'll be nice and sturdy and a, a nice kind of strong table top. And then if you look at the overhead view, we're doing this four feet by five feet. And that's, that's a unique size um, specifically for a unique game mat that my friend wants to use. The legs will be four by four posts and we'll probably have to cut those down to fit. And then you can see here kind of the layers. So, so we'll have to calculate what the layers are and then trim down the four by fours to, to fit nicely in there. And these will be held in place with some um, hanger bolts. All right, we have our sketch, so let's head on over and start chopping some wood. Moving on to the second layer of the table, I used 1x6 wood and way too many screws. I mean, seriously, why did I use that many screws? And glue. You'll be able to do pull-ups off this thing. To give the legs something to attach to, I added these corner brackets with some scrap 1x3. So the primary base of the table is complete, sans the legs and the two by six pieces that will go on uh, the outside of the table. But for all intents and purposes, the base portion of it is complete. So now I'm going to put on the table lip. And to do that, I'm just gonna add some one by three. And my pal likes how the, uh, the video he saw did the lip. So we're going to chamfer the uh, the the one by three here. And I'm just gonna do that on the table saw, very straightforward, don't need a router or anything like that. Once that's complete, I can flip the whole thing over and then use that to attach the one inch steel straps, strips, straps, strips, the strips, steel strips uh, for the magnets. And then I can put on the two by six and then I just have to work on the legs and this will be relatively complete. Okay, so let's head back on over to the table saw. Since these are going to be visible, I went for 45 degree mitered corners for a nice sharp look. For the chamfer, I just set the table saw to 45 degrees and ran the 1x3s through. 
They then attach to the foundation with some glue and brad nails. Lots of brad nails. All right, get a buddy and carefully flip the table over. Having this flip gives you something to rest the metal strips on while the epoxy sets. I didn't have any clamps deep enough to properly clamp these down, so I just leaned things against the strips to keep them in place. Hey, if it works, it works. I did have to make some cuts since the strips only come in three foot lengths. While the hacksaw is a good workout, if you have a machine that can do this, your arms will thank you. The two by sixes were f***ing awful. It took me what felt like days to find the straightest, unwarped boards at three different lumber centers, and even then, they weren't great. But it's super important to get them as straight as possible, since these are gonna be on the exterior, and everyone's going to see them. And more screws. I must have like a thousand in this thing by now. All right, gang. It's leg day, and we're going to head over to the table saw and cut these down from four by fours to about two and a half by two and a half. So let's go do it. These were also a pain when it came to finding unwarped, decent four by fours. There must be a place that sells good quality lumber somewhere near me. If any of my Jersey viewers have suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Because my blade doesn't go up high enough, I had to make two passes on the saw. Again, be careful here, go slow, and wear protection. Ah uh, yeah, smooth as a baby pine tree's bear. Yeah, that was a terrible analogy. Now that I have the legs cut down, they're nice, they're square, they're going to fit perfectly in the spots that I have for them on the table, I now need to figure out how exactly I'm going to attach these. Now, originally I was gonna use some metal brackets, but because I used pocket holes, um, I don't have room to attach the brackets. So, uh, I had to solve for that. And then also, I can't find hanger bolts long enough to attach to the leg and then go through the two layers of wood in the carcass plus the bracer. I need about seven inches, eight inches, and uh, I just couldn't find any. So I picked up some threaded rod. This is a three eighths inch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill in through the side. I only have room for one, unfortunately, but I'm gonna drill in through the side in here Probably, probably most of the way in actually, so it can hold a, a bunch of the weight. And then uh, epoxy them in, I think. Yeah, epoxy should hold this nicely. So uh, let's measure this and cut these down. I picked up two of them, they're 36 inches each. I figure if I do 10, that's 40 inches. That should be plenty. Okay, let's do it. I marked the center of the interior corners and then used a spade bit to drill through. To make sure I had perfect alignment, I grabbed the leg and held it in place while drilling. There's probably a more scientific way to do this, but whatever. Once the hole was deep enough, I hammered in the rod to make sure placement looked good. I then reattached the corner bracers and drilled through the opposite side to get the hole placement correct. Now that I have everything drilled out, I can epoxy the rods in. Just when you think you're almost done, you get a little scope change. So, uh, you know, because this is a custom table, we now obviously have the ability to add things to it. And so my friend has decided he would like a holder for his game mats. And uh, for those of you who don't know, game mats are, are things that you play games on and they're themed like the game that you're playing. They're actually really cool if you're into that kind of thing. So um, what we need to figure out is how to attach this uh, incorporated game mat holder. And uh, what I'm thinking is uh, we'll put in some uh, stringers across and uh, we can make some little wooden use, use, use like uh, my cousin Vinny, the two U's. Um, but we'll make these U's that uh, kind of attach to those stringers. So um, I have a bunch of one by three left over, so we'll just uh, make those out of that. Okay. Now what's great about the mat basket is that it actually adds additional support to the table foundation.
So before I start staining, I have two things left to do. I need to start working on the table top portion. And to do that, I'm cutting down a piece of four by eight plywood into two and a half by four foot length. So the tabletop will be in two sections. And then I need to attach some ledging to the interior of the table. I almost called it a bed. It's not a bed, different project. Interior of the table. So the tabletop has something to sit on. So we have to do that first. And then, then the last piece is actually figuring out how to actually remove the tabletop once it's on. Unfortunately, the tabletop was an afterthought. And uh, if it hadn't been an afterthought, uh, I would have come up with a solution that involved sticking your hand in through the slot where the metal is currently at. So you could just kind of pop up the tabletop. But there's a bunch of steel plating now around the entire table and I do not want to Start from scratch. So we're gonna come up with a solution. Wish me luck. Is that the wish me luck sign? Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah, that's it. All right, so let's put on the ledges and uh, finish this bad boy up. Okay. This is just one by three cut down to one by one-ish. When attaching to the sides of the table, I used a piece of scrap three quarter inch plywood to make sure I was getting everything nice and even. Oh, and don't glue these in place. They'll need to be removed to place the table bottom. Now the tabletop is three quarter inch plywood cut to size. What's the painter's tape you ask? It's to help reduce splintering. Although, joke's on me, when using the circular saw it should go on the bottom. Oops. To clean the edges, I used some veneer. I've covered veneering in the past, so we'll just move on. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below. All right, the table is up on four legs, so we're gonna sand with some 320 grit, wipe it down with tack cloth, and then a damp rag to perk up the grain, and then... It's staining time. It's what? It's what? It's staining time. It's what? It's what? It's staining time. Then what? Then what? It's pale. And now all is dry, so let's add some leg levelers and take this bad boy home. All right, so now we have to finish up the actual table, game table top surface. Not the top top, but the bottom top top. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to be using this material. It's called headliner, hardliner. It's uh, what's in the, uh, the roof of your car. Uh, it's kind of like a padded material. It's black. Um, it's really annoying to work with in the shop because it just attracts the dust. So once I get this on, I'm going to have to really scrub it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap the half inch plywood and staple it down. I'm debating on whether or not to glue it as well. Um, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Okay. So uh, let's go do that. Remember when I said don't glue the lips in place? That's so you can do this. Once it's down, you can go back and screw the lips back on. That just sounds weird. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the game table. And this project is finally over. And this is a huge relief because what you do not realize is that this project took me like six months to do. I started in January and it is now almost June. So I am happy and sad to have this project out of the shop. If you have uninterrupted time, you could really pound this out in a couple of weekends. But you know, with parenting and day jobs and travel and other household responsibilities, it just took a lot longer than originally expected. 
So is DIYing this actually worth it? The all-in cost was about $800, and that doesn't factor in my time. Conservatively, if I said it took 10 hours at $20 an hour, we're looking at an all-in at about 1000 bucks. If you search the internet, you'll find tables ranging from $1,000 to $3,000, depending on the customizations, the type of wood, whatever. The sky's really the limit in terms of some of these other manufacturers who make this stuff. So, if you have the money, by all means, go ahead, buy one. If money's a factor, if time uh, is not a factor, if space is not a factor, then DIYing might be the way to go. Now, you know my motto is stop planning and start making. Well, in this instance, I think a little bit more planning could have helped me in the long run. For example, the uh, tabletop, I was very disappointed how that came out. If I had done a little pre-planning, I would have realized that maybe I could have left a little slot where the metal went so I could slide my hand in and pop open the top. But I didn't, and by the time we got to the tabletop, it was too late. So. Maybe I should change my motto from stop planning to start making to stop planning unless it's a really big expensive project and start making. Something to think about. What's most important though is that I got to make something really cool for my pal and his family so they can have epic game nights on a super cool custom game table. So, are you working on something similar and you want to share your battle stories? Leave me a comment below. If you're taking this project on and you have questions, do not hesitate to ask. I will try to answer them the best I can. Let's learn through this together. Did you find this helpful? Share it, give it a thumbs up, and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. All right, I got to help my pal load this into his truck. So, until next time, stop planning, unless it's a really big expensive project, and start making. Thanks for watching. You got enough footage. Let's go. Come on. Get the other side. Let's go. Come on. Come on.